Welcome everybody to the Onward VR Master League Season 10 Week 5. My name is Nightfire with two E's. I am joined by my co-caster Snooper. How are you today, Snoop? I'm pretty good. It's been a wonderful Sunday. A little rainy in Florida, but it allowed me to stay in and work on some of my map making. Oh yeah. How about you? Uh, it's been good. Just got uh, done enjoying the Echo Arena Charity Cup, reaching our goal of $1,000 total. Really hype. Uh, very, very proud to be a part of that, going towards the Gamers Outreach uh, charity, which is just a great charity. So really uh, awesome day so far, and hoping to cap it off with a great bit of Onward Mayhem versus G-Men. I mean, these are the top two teams in the league right now, right? Because we have, you know... Uh, Global Chem are currently inactive uh, in the standings. Like a lot of these top teams are inactive, and these are two of them that have stuck around uh, throughout 1.8. And, I mean, what are you expecting today, Snoop, out of both of these squads? Well, that's kind of a tough thing to call. Um, they oh, yeah. are okay. the best teams in the league, uh, but all their players date back so far yep. into the seasons that, I mean, their experience is almost comparable. It's a bunch of, it's 20 players, or, ten. you know, 10 players, sorry. Uh, 10 players fighting against each other that are, I mean, they've been playing together for so long and know each other's plays and know that each of them are using stocks and that each of them can make their shots and know each lane. And it's, yeah. it's hard to predict that at this point. It's sort of luck of the draw, who can outplay the other, or who knows the new maps and how to play the new version of Onward better. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting one, especially with uh, Smoke still off the table in the VR Master League. They have been banned for the time being, and so those are not going to be an option in the utility pool. And we've just seen a significant shift in how the game is played. I'm very excited to see how these two teams are going to play it. And Snooper, I mean, what do we got for our pick bans out at the gate here? Well, what are we? What are, what's off the table? Well, right now we're banning Mayhem's Got Cargo Band, which they're 100% on. Wow. And they are very good on cargo. And G-Man's going to ban Subway, which I think everyone can understand why Subway gets banned. Um, it's tunnels, it's stairs, it's close range, it's dark. There's a lot of things that, I mean, besides who's good or bad on that map, you really don't want to play it against an experienced team. You're going to get gunned down in hallways or stairwells no matter what happens. So when you're in these top tiers, you really want to start cutting out those maps like Subway or Tanker where good teams can just take advantage of those choke points. Yeah, uh, the cargo ban, definitely an interesting one, considering that they're confident on that map. Maybe just uh, not feeling good without the smokes. You know, a lot of these teams had really uh, heavy smoke strategies on cargo where they would sort of douse the objective in a smoke field before, while they pushed. That option is off the table. That map is a lot different. Uh, without smokes being able to use on it, so maybe just not feeling comfortable there on it, and hence the ban. Uh, map one is going to be quarantine, I believe, correct? Yes, our first map is going to be quarantine, and to be honest, I, I understand completely why that's the first map. It's a nice, big, wide open map, lots of movement, lots of places to hide, and just maneuver around the other team, even when they're in a set defensive position or even on an offensive push. You can sort of get flanks, you can move around, and it's a lot more tactical. So against two very good teams, it's a nice starter. You're not sort of locking yourself into, okay, with Suburbia, we're going to fight close range. We're going to have to deal with them. And, you know, you might get a loss on that just because you're not warmed up. You're not ready for the hard fight close range. So Quarantine's one of those good mid to long range maps where you can sort of warm up, have some time to see where the enemy is, and then do your thing. Absolutely, and it's, uh, you know, all sorts of new angles, obviously, right? The map's been overhauled, and so there's just going to be tons of fresh perspectives to take, tons of new strategies to sort of be rolled out here throughout the course of the rest of Season 10. And uh, it's exciting, you know, honestly, this, uh, the, man, it, it, I really have been enjoying watching Onward in its current state this week. It has been really like a, watching a different style of game and it's fun you know I, at least from a spectating side of it i'm enjoying watching it. i've also been admittedly really enjoying playing it going in on the quest too, having a good time uh with that headset but you know it's uh yeah it, uh, 
I mean, if you had, who are you putting your money on? I'm just gonna go with G-Men because they're my old team. Snooper. I ha I kind of have to agree with you. I don't want to. I don't want to say we're biased against Mayhem. We're certainly oh, not. No. We love the Mayhem guys. I mean, I, we have, I personally have on a few the, yeah, of them. We have a, a fellow caster on the team. You know. Yeah, but this is just from a pure gameplay standpoint and experience standpoint i mean g-men have been here since season one mm. and they've been together i mean they've certainly had a roster change over time but for the most part they've been a cohesive team longer than say mayhem which i mean they popped up as one of the more top tier teams in like what the last two maybe three or four seasons yeah and they've been around for six of them so it's kind of a i, I have to throw it to g-men <laughs> okay we are going to cut to a brief intermission while we set up and hop into lobby for our first map of the day on quarantine. Do not go anywhere. Mayhem vs. G-Men about to begin. are in quarantine ready to go for map number one wanted to dive in and take a quick look at the active rosters for today over on mayhem we have defilade james bauk theta wookie and potato bot vr ttv by the way and over on g man we have zach fontaine 404 a miracle dev nintendo and keisha Keisha's not a familiar name on for me on G Men. Is that a name change? Am I just not familiar of that? Snooper, do you have any inside uh, details there? Am I just uh am I just wrong it's on not, that? It's not it's not inside details. I think you might have just forgotten just forgot. Keisha exists. Because Keisha's been around forever. Um Keisha. Keisha was one of the original shield players that pioneered oh, shield play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Now we're ringing it's some. It's been bells. a while since we since I've watched the 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 old squad go at it i feel like but uh yeah, yeah. absolutely keisha a very uh renowned shield player shields arguably in a bit of a funky position right now in 1.8 though so i'd be surprised if we did see some shield play come out today oh i i, I doubt we're gonna see yeah. any shields but for anyone unfamiliar what we're talking about is before 1.8 the shield was a virtual castle you could shoot into it with any kind of ammo armor piercing even a rocket launcher i think if you covered yourself well enough you'd be fine. So you could run around with the shield in front of you, sort of crouch, bring some night vision, bring a, put a laser sight or a flashlight on your pistol, and you're a wrecking machine. 
Um, honestly, if you had a rifle, you feared the shield because you only had 30 rounds to try and get that kill, and he's peppering you with with pistol rounds. It was not a fun time. Uh, so that's the shield. That's what we're commenting on the shield play and why it was so good before 1.8. See if it gets back to that state. But yeah, you just don't see it uh, favored too often now. Uh, it seems to be a little bit easier to get killed through some obviously wonky bits with it. But we're not, we don't need to go into the details. It's just uh, the the preference at the higher level is does not tend to lean into the shield anymore. And it does. That's uh, the new meta. <laughs> yeah, it's I, I, I honestly again, I've been enjoying watching it. You know, I like the angle focused rifle focused flashbang. Uh, kind of focused meta that has ended up sort of getting getting to be shown here on the May stage. And now we get to see what Mayhem and G-Men are going to bring to us as we hop into round number one of map one. G-Men on the defense and on one of the new objectives inside Broken Plane here. Down Plane. Plain fuselage, I've heard that before. I mean, whatever you want to call it and whatever your team understands it as. Plain objective. Yes. You know. I know how to not shoot yourself now, by the way. It, this should be a pretty standard defense, it looks like. We've got three moving to the south, Nintendo actually stopping in the center. Um, sort of back two story. Hopefully, they'll be able to see them cross south. There it is. Uh, a crater, crater, crater. Mayhem taking up that two-story position here, just on that bit oh, of a ledge. Oh, the question is, one. is he going to see James, two, uh, who's on those stairs? Because James is looking for this shot here. He heard those shots go off. They're probably there now. Well, he's also got Wookie and Theta coming around and flanking, and Kija and 404. Well, 404 is now rotating, but they don't. They have no view behind that roof. So Wookie, Theta, they can just waltz on through and come on behind 404 and Keisha, and that's how quarantine has changed. You used to be able to sort of hold up by this plane, and it was completely different before, and you'd be able to cover the north, south, and west. we got to focus on the now, Snooper. We don't have a picture of the old. All we have is what's uh, in front of us, and right now. Theta shifting around the north side. What's in front of us, honestly, is my preferred quarantine now these days. I love the new strats that we've seen anyway. So, oh, yeah. It's going to be exciting to see what we get here with the top two going at it. Already, Wookiee and Theta taking that north position, and Wookiee's looking for a little peek here out of the crack in the hole in the wall. And he's doing a pretty smart play. He's making sure that there's no one sitting up in this that little building area. Um alleyway thing and there are actually some enemies moving up there so wookie hopefully doesn't think he has a free rotation which it doesn't look like he's still using that crack pretty effectively but no one's looking at him you men all very much uh tucked in over towards objective side keisha doing a little fancy footwork on the ledge there trying to get an angle down the west alley he's got a good vision nintendo has the backup uh, on this as well. So two lines of sight getting directed down this west lane just to cover that uh, rotation if it comes in. 404 is going to be the man that covers a, a middle push, which is now more of a viable option. we got to also obviously keep our attention over on the south side of things. Zach Fontaine here in rubble and Miracle Dev may be running into some action shortly as Potato and James are making their way to the south. Miracle Dev I, has he seen him? Did he see the cross? I feel like he should have. He has the windows, too. I don't think he did, because he's focused more on that farther south position. I think this is more oh, up for gosh. Zach Fontaine to be ID IDing here on this cross. But Zach's watching center courtyard, so I don't think he's going to see this. Miracle Dev now is going to hear Potato Bot, and he should be aware of this rotation. He's got his eyes directed right onto the doorway that Potato's going to try and come out. And no flash? You definitely would expect something here. Potato going to get overzealous. Mm. Doesn't check the stairwell either, and Miracle Dev gets himself with a kill out the gate. Mayhem up, or excuse me, down 4-5. Now, Mayhem should understand that they've lost a player, and they should at least be... Re there it is. Wow. Reporting in his forward. position. And Deflate gets the refrag. And you got, I mean, at, at this level, that's something you just got to be aware of, right? You know, when you take a shot, a teammate's going to be have an eyes on you. You gotta stay tucked in for a little bit before you try and rotate like that. That was definitely a uh, 
a bit of an overconfident rotation coming in on that rooftop there. Yeah, uh, as good as that rooftop is, actually being on top of it is kind of a weak spot. You generally want to be... Ooh, and Keisha finds Wookie as he rotates through the alley. One and burning, one and burning. Their push is happening here. 404 sees one in center. Theta's not going to direct his attention over towards 404. Zach and James trade in center. And 404 takes more shots towards Deflate. Deflate just able to avoid it. Theta's here, but he can't jump this ledge. You can't get into that window unless you dive in it. Finally gets inside Ooh. the door. 404 is turned around. Theta getting misdirected on those audio cues. Definitely looking for a piece of the action. He takes his shots down towards 404, and he's now charging into a 1v3. And G-Men take it. They find Def uh, Deflade running through center, and that's it. Solid communication. I mean, we're off to the races, right? That was a uh, pretty standard round one out the gate, and G-Men doing a nice job to hold on on the defense there. Uh, nothing too crazy on the push, just a little bit of missed timing, really. You know, they almost had it synced up. They almost had the West come in just at the right moment when they were getting when when the West defenders were getting their attention focused over towards other spots. You know, but. Uh, the unfortunate reality of Theta trying to get inside this over this ledge here, you just can't do it. You have to do a full swing into the doorway, and uh, that cost him some time, ultimately also making more noise than necessary. 404 finds that kill. Then Depolade is just really in a, in a tough position as he tries to swing in for objective. Honestly, though, he could have potentially come in through the plane. He may have seen some success there. Yeah, I think that probably would have been a better path Unfortunately, you know, he thought some, you know, the other direction was better, and that's the reality of being on the ground. You don't exactly know everything. You only have what you have, you know, what your teammates are telling you, what you can see, what you can hear, and sometimes you're mistaken. Yeah. Mayhem on defense now. Same objective. Different spawns for G-Men. They get a bit of a, I don't know, would you say this is a quick spawn with this objective? Yeah, Certainly not a, a, a far one, because they are now directly south here. I'd call it quick spawn. Um, usually quarantine spawns are, they give you a good minute or two to get to somewhere, but here they're pretty much going to encounter each other really fast. But they, they seem to have slowed up, realizing that it was quick spawn. And that's the experience of these teams. They, they can understand where the spawn is, where they are in relation to it, and adapt their tactics to it. I mean, I'm just looking at the overhead. Uh, Mayhem with a completely different defensive setup. You know, they have Deflate and Potato way far out there uh, on that north roof. No one's tucked into that four-story. They're all holding much more aggressive angles up in the north. And it does sort of put it at much heavier focus up here. As soon as, you know, if they don't spot anyone, which they won't, up in the north, eventually they can start to make that adjustment and soon enough, Wookie is going to find some shots downrange here onto G-Men, but just a matter of time. Once that happens, it's going to be up to Mayhem to shift their defense accordingly because, like we said, G-Men have this fast bond. They are all right here. Yeah, and I don't think Mayhem knows that G-Men are where they are, but G-Men have spotted them. I mean, if you notice, James Bulk and Deflate aren't looking anywhere near where G-Men are. So there's definitely a bit of an information gap going on right now. G-Men definitely know where Mayhem have spawned. So using all this information, I think Wookiee's going to get overwhelmed before anything can really happen from James and maybe some refrags from Deflate from the roof. But still, that's it's a dicey, dicey proposition. Because everyone's a little bit open except for Wookiee and James. I like Wookiee's spot, but it is super vulnerable to nades. All you gotta do is toss a nade, bounce it up against that wall, it drops right down onto Wookiee's foot. So it's uh, it's great gun-wise, but if they have a frag here, Wookiee can easily be uh, you know, removed from that defensive position. We'll see what ends up happening. Wookiee actually gonna take a nice shot through the crack. He is now exposed, though, and all sorts of eyes are drawn in here. Zach swings on an aggressive rotation, finds one, dodges shots from the remaining defense of Mayhem, and now Mayhem have to shift because the push is on. Swinging here onto James. James does find Zach Fontaine. 
like Miracle Dev can't land the shots, can't pick up James in the center. You got one in center garage. And it's a 2v4 maybe. in a flash. Yeah, James Bull holding his corner right after Wookie goes down, hitting everyone who tried to cross. Zach Fontaine. And all that's left is a Miracle Dev and Keija on the south push. Rough start. Now, there's no more, I guess, rotations coming from Mayhem, so yeah. I don't think they're quite sure that all of G-Men are over here, but now they should be. I mean, they've killed three. Whether they know they've actually killed three or not, that's a different question, but I feel like one of the three Mayhem players in the north should be rotating back to support yeah, James. I'll watch your back while you cross. But you got one center. Um, center but it could be an information oh, yeah, gap. Like right. I said, they could be thinking the rest of G-Men are coming around behind roof, and... Hmm. But they've been holding there this whole time on North. A minute 20 left. At this point, you should be guaranteed no one's coming, right? You can all direct your attention down into the I mean, south. Even if even if you're in your head for some reason, you're thinking they're still coming north. Sure. I would collapse back to objective, and you've got a minute left. Make them run through all five or all sure. four of you. Can Kija thread a needle here? Maybe. There is Potato Bot who has an eye here, but... I don't know if Kija, again, went in through the plane. I think that would be an interesting entry point right on to objective. Well, he has 50 seconds left, and Theta is rotating back to the objective. And I think he's just going to sit on it. So even if Kija sneaks his way past James, past Deflate, yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. He was going to get killed anyways. For the firing squad there. Miracle Dev looking for some action. Who are the... Uh... Not really Man, getting the bro. shots he he needs. Definitely there, still alive. A flash comes out and over. I think that no, it didn't get Miracle Dev. Miracle Dev still yeah. into the one v one with Definitely. Twenty seconds left. He's gonna have to push in through the one v four. Not gonna be an easy task. I think he realizes what he has ahead of him. Thirteen seconds down, he goes finally from Potato Bot and Mayhem have answered back in kind with a very strong defensive round. We're tied up one one. Yeah, he heard the 30 second timer and you can tell he was, he's like, should I fight these guys? And the answer, when you hear the 30 second timer, the answer is always no. You need yeah. to be going to that objective or somehow see everyone in front of you and then kill them. Either way, he was in a bad place and I think he knew it. And we're on to a new objective over by Ambulance. So nice to have the mini map back in action. Yes, we don't have to hunt down the objectives. <laughs> uh, as for this objective, there's really no good places to cap on it. You can't cap inside the building, except for. Can you cap inside the outside? <laughs> I don't know. That's actually. I need to try that, but I don't think so. I, I want to say I've Certainly tried to. You can. How you could think you not? so? Oh, we will see. We'll see if anyone tries it. But I, I I mean, that might be a weak spot, but usually the defenders have one or two people in that building just because it's such a strong castle. Chat, it's got us. all those... Yes, chat, please tell us. <laughs> we'll hear about it in six minutes' time. Actually, five. But either way, we are now into round number three of map number one. Thank you all for tuning in today. We do appreciate it. I did see some... Donations coming in from the Onward community in the Echo Arena Charity Cup, which I do really appreciate. I love seeing the support across uh, leagues and obviously for a good cause. So shout out to those of you that did drop in there. And I mean, we got action, Snooper. This has been a great series out the gate. Miracle Dev's going to go down right away. Potato Bot picks him off. No smokes here to cover the cross. It's an incredibly risky move to make. And Keisha was thinking about trying to copy that, but as a... Uh, Second guess that choice. Well, there's two of them all the way in the north. I think Keija realizes, even trying to cross that south street next to him on the right, it's a bad deal. The Mayhem's certainly taking advantage of pre-fire lanes right into the objective, using their, I guess, height advantage to be able to shoot down into the walls and keep anyone from going onto the roof. And that's just, that's a smart play right there. And I'm pretty sure they understand they can't hang out too long, otherwise Nintendo will shoot them through the windows. So, a lot of good plays coming from Mayhem right now. I like the setup. We'll see if it works. 404, most likely going to be the one that runs into action next, as Potato Bot is, 
getting ever so close to him on that corner. Is this a position you expect, though? I don't think I'd be anticipating 404 to be crouched here by the rubble. No, not at all, but... Not at all. <laughs> it is a pretty... Okay. It is a very solid spot. Sorry to interrupt. No, no, no. It's, it, it, you're, you're right. It's, it's one of those... It's an interesting aggressive position that you can take, you know, uh, on defense. It's a nice shift for 404 too. He heard those gunfire right out the gate. You know immediately that's a north spawn. And so he, he gets aggressive up here to set himself up, and a nade nearly catches him out. A very nicely tossed nade just out of range from 404 there. Wookie's looking for the frag, and he actually finds himself a bit of an, an angle there. The refrag from Zach Fontaine. Shots just miss over the head of Wookie. He's able to duck under the cover, and now Zach drops back. Trying to reinforce onto objective as they're into the 3v4. Yeah, Keisha's watching the east, making sure... Ooh, and Zach Fontaine's fine. Wookie on the rotation. This map is so different. You know, I kind of wrote that off. I was thinking, okay, Zach's going to rotate out here. He's not going to try and hold this. But the, 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 the levels over there are so different now. And uh, an interesting bit of exchange going on there. Zach able to get a key kill, and we're into the 3v3. Can Defilade actually make it across out of the car park? Because I feel like that's the hardest part of this level. Is if you go into the car park and you're trying to cross out of there, someone's going to pick you up. Whether you get picked off coming out, whether you get picked off crossing the street, that's unknown, but you're going to be spotted and you're going to be picked out. I'm surprised Nintendo hasn't gone to to try and get Defilade from an angle above. Back and forth. Shots coming in from Nintendo down to Theta. Theta wins a huge monumental trade. He's opened up the south entry, and now Keija has all sorts of things to worry about. He is completely pinched between two enemies. Yeah, Keija's in a bad place right now. This is a classic pincer tactic. And James Michael finds Gettin Zach Gettin Fontaine, Gettin leaving Keija the lone man out. Now, Keija is watching the objective, but if... Theta can cap inside that little trailer park. He might be able to do it without Keija watching, but I don't think they're going to do that. I think they're probably just going for the kill. Oh, oh that was Whoa. close. That was a few feet from going over. The flash comes out and over, though. That is going to blind Keija. Theta is going to swing just at the right Come moment. On. Gets himself the final kill. Mayhem with a Marsoc round up 2-1. Yeah, Poor Keisha there. He was encircled. He was fighting the best he could, but Mayhem just outmaneuvered him. And he's one guy trying to guard that objective. He didn't have any choice. Bravo, Keisha. Holding your ground. And just a, uh, a risky start there for G-Man. You know, to go for that cross out the gate, to not have any smokes to do it, it's you're gambling, right? You're saying, well, I'm going to risk my life. If I don't get shot, I'm going to gain information, and I'm going to get a better position. If I do get shot, I'm gonna die, and I'm also gonna gain information just in a different way, you know? <laughs> so it's yeah. it's a bit of a trade, I suppose. Ultimately, you do get something. They did learn of the North spawn and could adjust accordingly, but uh, yeah, was it worth it there down the road? I don't know, you know? Do you, do you invest too on that spot there where Keija was? That's kind of gets, that gets, starts to get a little bit crowded on that, on that objective corner then, you know? And it's, uh, I mean, it's unfortunate Nintendo goes down there because Nintendo really had to find that kill. Because once he did, then he could have shifted back up to the roof, reinforced down into the courtyard. Could have been a whole different ballgame. Yeah, definitely could have. Now we're on to round four. I'd like to remind any of our new viewers here, if one of the team puts in the code on that objective, they get two points. So, there's no chance of finishing the map right now, but G-Man can certainly pull up pretty hard right now. Quick spawn here coming in for G-Man. See what they do as they charge in from the west. Sometimes you can catch out a unprepared defender on a rotation. Potato Bot does get identified on the cross here. Could easily get picked up here. He's not careful. Down he goes. Oof. Now, Zach Fontaine hung back a little bit just to get a little recon to make sure no one was going on the roof and saw where the crosses were. So he knows Defilade is in the middle. Ooh, Theta finds Keija on the cross. A really nice long angle there, holding inside 
uh, this new building here on objective. Definitely harder to identify, but not impossible. Miracle Dev able to find one with a barrage of one. fire. And Nintendo is going to test his luck at challenging Theta, but he's going to need a flash if he really wants to apply the pressure. Defilade picks up Zach Fontaine getting aggressive through middle tank courtyard. Information gained, though. The callout's there, and 404 is dialed in. I don't... I feel like they should have known Deflade was there. I heard Zach Fontaine call it out. I mean, Zach Fontaine definitely should have known it, considering he was the one who saw it and called it out. But that's just such a good spot, it seems, hanging out on defense, especially for this objective. Jeez, Theta finds another one trying to swing on him there. Should be three, two left. Big pickups, and they have the accurate kill count. 2v3. I like this angle Nintendo's taking, not going down the main lane and actually a bit of a risk, really, since they know Defilade's in that tank courtyard. Well, I understand why he's doing it. If there's someone in the building, which is Theta, mm -hmm. um, looking through the windows, there's zero chance of seeing him. Yeah. And Wookie has to literally pull out of his position, out of cover to see him. So that's actually a really, really good line. Whether Defilade's going to see him, that's another question. I don't think Deflate is. Wookie can peek up on that on that little sand lump, though, and get an angle over the wall. Nintendo obviously has eyes on that. He's probably got gun on corner. There's Wookie peeking. Oh, he's identified, and now he's in a bad spot. Now Nintendo's really trapped. He has to drop off, just avoids the fire from Deflate, and Austin pulls out a utility piece. Oh, Theta's going for him. Ooh, and Nintendo takes down Theta. They now have control of the hospital. Yeah, this is worst case. Definitely goes down trying to cross, trying to get back onto objective, and they've had to rotate because of this kill Nintendo has picked up. Wookie charging inside. Shots coming in from Nintendo do go wide. Wookie going to swing on it. The pillar blocking the shots. Can't get the reload off. Wookie gets a massive kill. And now 404 versus Wookie. How does this shake out? Well, Deflade's down, and he's certainly giving information. Whether a res can happen, I don't know, but I mean, Wookiee is definitely well informed. Minute 45, 404 likely to take this, take his time on this one. There is going to be time for the res to come out from Wookiee, but geez, that's a huge risk, right? Wookiee, Wookiee's never going to go for that. Well, I, I think it's actually the smart play to not res definitely. 90 seconds. Because he's basically now a scout that 404 has to either reveal oh, his position yeah. to kill or ignore. And either way, Deflate is going to give out info to Wookiee. And Deflate can also use his little local Should voice to distract 404 because yeah, 404, I don't think he knows that Deflate is quite yet. down. He do probably doesn't have an accurate kill count either, inside. considering everything that went on in the hospital. The so 404 definitely has a bit of a job ahead of him. Yeah. Let's just let Deflate and Wookiee take over the show here as they go on the defense. They are communicating back and forth he's, he's as you suspected. Street, yeah, I mean, if Deflate just keeps watching, street, Wookiee can back. move with impunity. I mean, not impunity, but he, he knows he can move to certain places without 404 capping, and then Deflate can certainly tell him when he's capping. And then what, let's the let, firefight's let's happening right now. Let's listen the Cracking the wall left side of the white car. Oh, the man. Wookie's now flashed. He's crossing, he's crossing. He's crossing. He's on the front of the ball. Front of the wall. Front of... Hey. That's a good flash from 404. The callouts were there from Defile, but maybe they were too much. 404 gets the kill, ties things up. 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, I mean, information is not always your best friend. Sometimes it overwhelms you. Sometimes it makes you make plays that aren't exactly the smartest and i don't know charging 404 head on that's kind of a 50 50 shot of whether you're actually going to get the kill or not oh, quite a round there coming in from both of these teams the series delivering through and through these two top squads going at it on quarantine right now and they're playing it seriously. I mean, you heard those comms from Def Lady. He's calling out everything to a T. But ultimately, the flashbang, I think, from 404 pays off. Ends up swinging wide on that uh, car and gets the final kill.
flashbangs are very clutch right now, considering... Oh, yeah. I mean, we don't have smoke, and the only thing you really have to rely on to actually blind players is the flashbang, or flashlights, mind you. But, I mean, I feel like Wookie maybe should have fell back, let 404 come to him. Uh, just kind of an interesting play there to charge him. In my head, it's like, that's rolling the dice. Who's going to get that first shot? Who's, you know. But we're on to a new objective, Tank Courtyard. Uh, nothing too dastardly about this objective. You can certainly cap by the tank. You can cap over by the buildings. So it's, it's a rather protected objective. It's just, can you actually get there? Can you... Because <laughs> the defense can stack up. There's that center building. There's the burning building. There's the lower carport. I mean, there's tons of places the defense can pop out in your face on top of objective. Very intrigued to see what the defensive setup looks like here from G-Men as we dive into the round up, number five. The back and forth has been a joy to watch, and I don't know what we're going to get here. You know, I'm not sure what kind of defensive setup G-Men are going to be going for. This push from Keija is a bit risky. If there was that west spawn, uh, he could have gone down right away, and getting a bit over-aggressive there is definitely able to find out a cross right away. Information for 404 to work with, but... Not a lot. Probably not worth the down. No, not at all. I mean, they know Deflade's there, but there's still four people spreading out. I mean, honestly, 404, it is a good position. Nice center. I guess rock on that objective. But I honestly don't like fighting out of the carport. Once someone gets on one of the roofs, you're just a sitting duck. They're shooting fish in the barrel, you know? There, this is actually a very interesting defensive setup. We have two G-Men sitting all the way back. I guess they're trying to watch each roof from long range. I guess Nintendo is watching full south, but... Still a very interesting defense, because if they lose Keija and then a quick push happens on the objective, they couldn't get to the objective fast enough to stop the cap. Yeah. Strange to have Zack and Nintendo so far back there on this objective. Maybe they just don't feel like there's any other better positions to take. They are obviously, again, invested in watching this south cross. You do have to be careful of that flank because it is obviously an option. So they do have to sort of set up a bit of a 360-degree coverage around this objective because of its placement, because of how the map is set up now. Just something that you have to sort of be uh, be wary of, and that definitely is what G-Men are doing in this defensive setup. Some shots coming in over here that. on the north. I think it was just a bit of pre-fire, but it's information for Miracle Dev to work with. There's 404 finding yeah, Deflate over by the uh, plain nose. Area from burning a... Now James Bulk knows where 404 is, and so does Potato Bot, so they're trying to find an angle. No, uh... Yard. Maybe they won't need to. If the snade's good, ooh, almost. Just a bit short on the toss. Zach, can you see the street? Probably a second away from rolling on top of 404's head. Ooh, Nintendo finds Going James Wolf on top of the hospital. Roof. Can't confirm him. I think that south cross might be too hard for Potato Bot to make it. Well, we were talking about this position. Uh-oh, a bit of a... No, oh, Miracle Dev downing himself. We were talking about this position from Nintendo, saying yeah, that it's covering the that. south, but he does have vision, obviously, over onto that rooftop. He has a nice little angle under the wall, where I think he took that initial shot, and so it's certainly more of a, uh, a bit more versatile of a position than maybe initially were thinking there, but either way, an unfortunate down for Miracle Dev as Wookiee and Theta are going to find the comp from now they have control of north, and it's a 3v3. Well, they certainly don't know where Zach Fontaine and flashbang? Nintendo are. That's all right. Hold on to yeah. it. Whether they're just going to run into the fire, I don't know. Okay, Tatabot seems to have some idea, though. He knows pitch. Jesse does. Swings and finds the shots onto 404. Down objective. Really nice recognition from Potato Bot there. Get that kill. Nintendo has a very tough 
spot to get picked from, though. He's really tucked in. A nice nade toss comes in. Another follow-up nade comes in just a bit short. Potato Bot dropping back at just the right time. Minute 13 on the clock. Not a lot of time left, but look at this. Wookie is also rather close to objective. Yeah, this is actually a danger zone for the defense here, because if they keep Zach Fontaine and Tendo back, a cap could come out pretty quick. Wow, Nintendo with a huge kill on a potato bot. Wookie botching the flash. That's actually going to slow them down wholeheartedly, allowing Zach to go onto this rotation here and get a little bit closer to Wookie. And now he knows Wookie and Theater are on the other side of this wall. Yeah, that might be. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, we botched his own flash. This... Oh, no. Zach Fontaine doesn't get that toss. As far as he was hoping, and blinds himself into a death. Mayhem capitalize and go up 3 2. I mean, that's you've got to be very careful about where you throw your flash grenades. I know I personally don't use them because 50% of the time I'm just flashing myself <laughs> like that. So you've got to be very careful and be very good with them. Now, same objective. Let's see what Mayhem does with this. I, I still have to question leaving those two players so far back. You generally want to keep players within a 15-second run of the objective, at least two or three of them. You don't necessarily want, you know, three or four players out of that sphere because once you start losing your core group defending the objective, you now have your whole team off the objective and you can get capped on and lose real hard, real quickly. Taking that full minute and a half between rounds here this time. At least it felt like a little bit longer than the other ones as G-Men are on <coughs> the back foot here. Mayhem with a huge round on Marsoc. And we'll see how they set up on defense as we hop into round number six. This series is delivering so far, huh, Snooper? I mean, what a map one. I mean, yeah, it's just been back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And honestly, I haven't seen anything I'd say like, Wow, that was a super mistake. Why would you do that? Like, no, this is all just. You don't think the, fl the flashing play. your own self and dying at the end of the round is a super mistake? <laughs> I wouldn't say a tactical mistake, but everyone <laughs> makes a mistake like that. I mean, it's, it's occasionally things flub up, but like honestly, it's all top tier play, even when they're flashing themselves in the face. Oof, Wookie, fortunate that he dodges those rounds and gets up into this north position. Actually, goes back to where those shots were coming from. And sets up. A bold. Not sure where he's going. Look, he's a bold man. I mean, he's just rotating into the fire that was shot at him. And okay. <laughs> now Zach Fontaine is in a great position to catch anyone trying to rotate down to the south. 404 in a bit of a battle with Wookie here. Tucks himself in to a very small sliver of cover. Now, Wookie just threw a grenade past Theta. I'm not entirely sure what that was about. One south. Theta by catches uh, Nintendo. Hospital, or behind hospital. Finally, the first kill comes out. First blood goes to Mayhem. Possibly tagged him. Look at how back this defensive is. Aside from Keisha, Miracle Dev and Zach Fontaine are so far back on this setup here. Keisha way in front, and he needs to really just put a big pause on his aggression right now. Sometimes slowing it up, seeing where the enemy is, and communicating with your team is really the best choice as opposed to let's engage the next guy. Um, sometimes you just need to recollect. Obviously, you have to do it in a speedy amount of time. You don't have five full minutes to do a team meeting, but... Oh, Keisha's doing some interesting stuff crawling up the stairs. I mean, look at all these lasers crossing, uh, watching this courtyard, though. It's not... This is right here. Flashes are continuing to be thrown at him. So he doesn't have any vision, and he's really just trying to blind the prone his way across here. Maybe if James gets distracted by a 404, there's a chance, but James certainly is going to spot this prone cross here from Keisha soon enough. There it is, finally. Yeah, it. Shots come in. <laughs> I was just waiting for it, honestly. I, I knew it was going to happen. They almost distracted what, what? him enough. Almost, almost. almost. 
But 404 and a Miracle Dev definitely know where James Volk is, and they've definitely seen Potato Bot. So let's see how they deal with that. I mean, we have a third player all the way up in the north, Zach Fontaine. I would call this a flank at this point. I mean, he's pretty far out there, and he's basically gotten around the defense. Miracle Dev picking off for uh, James Belk before 404 can get the chance to, and a nice pick up there. G-Men are setting up in a decent spot here. They have good coverage from the roof from Miracle Dev. 404 about to be coming in from the south. They need the, the pinch in from the north to draw Wookiee's attention. And then who knows what could happen. Well, they certainly have the time. A minute 45 this close to the objective. I mean, it's not the world of time, but it's definitely a good chunk of time to get there. They still don't have quite all the angles to mm -hmm. kill Wookiee or Potato Bot or Deflate, but I mean, I think Zach Fontaine could be the clutch here. Yeah, really, the move I think would be for 404 to come in from the far to, to flank over from that east side, come in from the upstairs, have the back of Potato Bot dead, and then you've got control of objective. Yeah. I'd, if they can cross, well, they definitely can cross the street. Whether we'll Deflate will actually get that shot off or not, I don't know. Wookie ID Zach and then somehow shoots himself. A bit of a trade there. He's downed and resible, but no one's going to pick him up. Pistol shots to draw the eyes from Defilade is working. 404. Gone under his detection. Defilade finally IDs 404, but a bit too late as it does result in one kill. And now Miracle Dev knows right where Defilade is, can rotate accordingly. Should be going for the cap. Is definitely going to check. He does see the cross. Miracle Dev not ready for the peek up. And Defilade with a huge kill. Saves it for Mayhem as they take map 1-4-2. I mean, that was a solid defense for Mayhem there. Made sure everyone was watching their corners. There was no holes until the enemy made them. But, uh, I mean, that was a good, good defense for Mayhem there. G-Men just, they couldn't quite find him. I mean, that could have been bad <laughs> you know the the the, sh the self down there uh, resulting in a potential cap it could have really swung things into the hands of g-men but mayhem yeah definitely really with the key kills there and I, I thought that they had knowledge of that position obviously it's hard to identify a little bit of a head peeking up uh, out of a dark hole like that when you're on volk right yeah i mean it's very very hard to see them there I still feel like maybe rotating around the back of the building as opposed to going to the objective directly would have been maybe a better choice. But I mean, I'm not I'm not playing. I'm not on the ground. <laughs> you're yeah. you're thinking different when you have the guns in your hand and then you hear the timer going off. It's a whole thing. We are about to hop into suburbia for map number two. This is G Men's map pick. So as a reminder, Mayhem coming in there on quarantine. That's their choice. And now G-Men opting for Suburbia. And uh, I, wow, I, with, the, with the current meta, Suburbia is a fun one to watch, to say the least. You know, it's a lot of pre-fire. It's a lot of guessing games through the shrubs. Tons of flashbangs. And again, I said it the other day, and I'll say it here. I think we're going to start to see more nades come in as the season develops you know i think players are going to start to try and opt for maybe potential nade kills more often than just going for the flash and swing although the flash is still very strong you know it's uh it's it's been tuned a bit you know it's not as powerful as it was it's still a great utility tool to be used and especially in close quarters like this i'm sure we're going to see it but uh i'm also starting to lean into the idea that nades are going to start to become a more prominent utility used yeah, especially without smokes. Um, right. A lot of teams really like to block off sight, lines of sight using the smokes just to get to their positions in the beginning. This objective specifically had a strategy where a team would throw like, what, five, six smokes at the objective, cover the whole area, start a firefight, and then have maybe one or two players just crawl up in, which is what we try, saw Keisha try and do several times in quarantine, uh, do a sneak cap on the crawl. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But without smokes, there's no chance of that happening. 
Not seeing any subs come out on either side of the roster, so we are going to see the same five on each side that we saw last round. And uh, I think we are just a few moments away from hopping in to map two. I, a lot of things, you know, if you're G-Men right now, uh, this is, I don't know, are you surprised? Probably not. Mayhem doing good on their map choice. Quarantine's a bit of a toss-up. Now is really when G-Men need to step it up here. Obviously, backs against the wall here as map two is a must win if we want to take it to a best of three. And uh, we'll see what they can do on their pick as we hop yeah. into round number one. <laughs> yeah, definitely an interesting win from Mayhem there. I mean, taking it from G-Men handily. Yeah. Go get that shit. And there's the free fire coming out from Keija. But, I mean, that's really what this meta is, right? It's the meta of trades. It's the meta of reacting to gunfire, adjusting accordingly, trying to find those kills. Keeja coming in here with some flashes out the gate and getting a bit aggressive. And I wonder if he's going to go for another flash toss over towards James. No, that's a bit of an odd nade toss there. Maybe a bit panicked there. Another nade long range over towards Miracle Dev gets blocked by the APC. And we've had a lot of gunfire getting uh, tossed over here on the east side. Now, Potato Bots using his local hearing pretty well. You can hear Keisha bouncing back and forth, but I think Keisha's actually trying to draw that sound out to make a call out come out. Um, a lot of a lot of mental games going on, I think, going here. Ooh, a big swing from James. Even though Keisha's there on the corner, he gets the kill. A bit of a weird trade goes down. Keisha finds Defilade, but not before he gets picked up through the shrubs. James and Zach trading on that other side, and there's three down in Resible for G Men. All 404 has to do is come over here and pick up his entire team. Yeah, I mean, it, can he get there? There's no one watching, so he might as well go for it. I don't think Potato Bot or Wookiee's going to rotate out yeah, and try and stop it. They're pretty committed right. to their positions. Right. So I think we're going to see G Men get back up and ready to fight soon enough. Zach is picked up. He gets the confirm shots out. His turn that. now to swing out to Miracle Dev. Pick him up. 404. Gonna try and go over to Keisha, but, but not, not before Potato Bot can get the confirm. Down he goes for 404 with the shots back. Zach Fontaine somehow getting picked up in the crossfire. Or excuse me, no, uh, Theta getting picked up by Zach Fontaine in that crossfire. I don't even know if that was intentional or not, but down goes Theta, and there are five alive to the one of Mayhem. What a massive swing for the likes, oh no, of G-Men. The final kill coming in, and a solid round one from this team. Wookie was going for the res there at the end, and I, I mean, was... as... <laughs> he had his back to the enemy. He was kind of being a little bit hasty about it. I. I yeah. You always chaos. want to try and cross it. Yeah, chaos is the right word. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> you know, the the G-Men definitely instigated chaos in that defense. They managed to just find everyone trying to rotate. You know, they, they caught all of the rotations out on that side. Obviously, the three-man res really messes with the head of the enemy, too, because you have a guesstimated kill count, maybe. You know, you have an idea of what the trades were. But, uh, yeah, a, a very... Fast, also, round one, out the gate there for G-Men. And uh, if you want to talk about a way to swing momentum after losing a map to, to Mayhem, it's probably the best way you can do it. Oh, yeah. I mean, G-Men definitely brought it back to them. I'm pretty sure Mayhem didn't have an accurate kill count because they probably called out one or two of those first downs thinking they were kills. And then from there, it all spirals out. Shout out to everyone that is tuning in tonight we do appreciate you dropping by for a good bit of sunday night action i do encourage you if you haven't already to hit the follow button as there's going to be a lot more action over the course of the remainder of season 10 about four or five weeks of good quality onward here on onward master league 2 and onward master Yo, league 3 so make sure you're following everything and if you got a twitch prime sub don't be afraid to drop it that comes back towards us it supports the casters that deliver you the awesome games you love to watch. We are about to hop now into round number two to see how G-Men defend the objective. And it looks like they're going for a rather non-standard defense through lane. Hey, watch me cross. I'm coming back. Wow. Wow. Oh, lane one. My bad. 
crazy that Keisha comes back off of that. <laughs> he gets ID on an aggressive push up. He was going to try and push himself up into the corner shrubs here and be right up in the face of this playground push. But James ID'd him right away. And so he opted to swing himself back. And that was obviously the right choice as nades and the like are getting expelled there over to that corner. I mean, that's two utility down. That's a, that's a lot of points utilized on someone that's not in a space. Yeah, I mean, you really want those utility to clear those front porches where 404 and Keja are, or at least provide more chaos so that you can get on objective and cap. You, I don't really support using your uh, oh. utility early. Obviously, we have a lot more information. For them, that's the smart choice, right? They, have, for all intents and purposes, have perfect you know information that someone's in that corner. You know, so it, oh, makes, yeah. it makes sense for them to be using that utility. We obviously have that perspective. And you speak of nades to get on that, get those patio downs. There was one toss there. It just didn't roll down the roof like you need it to. And 404 is able to stay alive for a bit longer. Now, Potato Bot isn't a good place to clear that front porch. If he just uses a nade or even a flash, he could get a pretty good angle on 404 before anything could happen. Nintendo would be able to pop out and get the refrag, but then that also expose them to the rest of Mayhem. And so, I don't know. I think Potato Bot could actually kick off the action here. It's, a, it's not, a, not, a, not a normal spot to kick off the action. Definitely lane two is a bit riskier, as you often have uh, you know defensive setups there where you see Potato Bot scanning that will ID people as they push up this lane. In this case... G-Men have invested a bit heavier in the west side of things as Miracle Dev and Zach are tucked in over here. And it's interesting. Potato is going to be able to sort of work his way up there a little bit farther than maybe normal. That's all dependent on a Miracle Dev because if a Miracle Dev rotates a little bit to his left, he has a perfect angle on Potato. I think that was a flash out towards Antakija. By Theta? I'm not sure, but either way, a bit of Swarm lane four porch. gunfire expelled there, a nade tossed. So utility getting used by g as well. Definitely running low on utility. I mean, both sides have to be at this point. And look at this. Potato Bot's trying to scan underneath the shrubs here. There's a bit of a gap in the shrub. He might be able to ID 404. And at the very least, as soon as 404 peeks out, he's going to go down. Zach... Picks out Defilade, and now it's going to open up the defense to sort of get a little bit more shifty from the north. Zach could take his eyes and direct them over to this direction. It's all down to a Miracle Dev and Zach Fontaine and whether they look at Potato Bot. I don't know what Miracle Dev was just doing there. Doesn't see Potato Bot somehow. Just took a bunch of blind fire downrange towards him. Finally, it comes in, and I don't know if that was in... Oh, 404 got a kill on another one. Theta able to pick up Zach Fontaine, and now the last one alive. James Boak gets Miracle Dev. He has to deal with another one that is rotating hard. Nintendo over on the east. Oh, those shots are missing, though. That's going to give him an opportunity to fire back, and it's a 1v2. Yeah, G-Men are not safe right now. Even the, even with that spectacular crisscross... I want to say double kill, but it wasn't. Um, just murder of Z uh, Zach Fontaine, or not Zach Fontaine, um, Potato Bot and Wookie there. I mean, they're still in a precarious position, but they will get the res on a Miracle Dev. Yeah, and that's pretty big. 1v3, an entirely different story. I think he had an opportunity to maybe swing there on those rotations, get himself into a more advantageous position than this one, because he's still basically in a, in a standard spot that you would have your eyes directed to and you can even see utility now coming over towards james side but a bit too far as nintendo overshoots that yeah that flash grenade was never gonna make it that far <laughs> okay two flash grenades well 15 seconds on the clock i guess they're uh -oh. assuming he's a bit closer than he is right now Miracle Dev on a wide swing goes down but nintendo able to get the refrag and g-men now with a commanding 2-0 lead that was a solid defense from G-Men there. Uh, able to respond very quickly to any of Mayhem's movements, especially when they they got one or two of the G-Men. They were able to just come around, close those gaps, and just wipe them out.
on to a new objective over by the white car and burning truck. So a little bit different. Uh, you can definitely cap by those boxes and be pretty safe if you cleared all the way behind the white car and the backyard. So definitely a more interesting objective. I love it, man. I've seen a lot of new faces in chat, and uh, I gotta believe it's an indicator of the time, Snooper. You know, we're seeing growth across the VR space. Lots of new people coming in from the Quest, Quest 2 uh, sort of universe, enjoying Onward and finding a very solid, uh, alive VR esports scene for the game. I'm sure it's an exciting time for some of these new players to come in and see these two teams go at it, because, geez, I mean... If you're just tuning in to VRML and you're not really familiar with the action, this is a great match to drop by because this is good quality onward that we're seeing right now. I mean, interesting trades, good good attempted maneuvers, nice, uh, you know, utility usage. And, uh, you know, I don't know how this unfolds, but I guess we'll find out as round three is underway. Mayhem on the defense. Are you on the floor? Now, it looks like they're going to try and do a more, I guess, westerly push. Oh, never mind. Theta's the only one going west, and Def Laid and Wookiee are just going to go straight up, hit their porches. And <laughs> as you can see, those porches are pretty clutch to defense. Mm -hmm. This is a very meta defensive setup from Mayhem. Nothing out of the ordinary. No any aggressive early pushes. No use of any of the flashbangs to sort of blind or get aggressive up through lanes oh, two or one. Me. Yeah, this is usually called a checkerboard pattern. And if you're looking, you know, three in the back, two in the front, Hot offset. Potato. So uh, rather standard defense in the real world, too. So bravo for Mayhem. <laughs> I, organically coming up with it, I don't know. But it's a, it is a solid defense either way. 404 making a bunch of commotion here, trying to most likely draw out utility from the enemy. He wants to be heard in his position and if anything he's also kind of deafening them from any other potential footsteps coming in nintendo gets a bit more stealthier there and i just don't know how you do this objective i don't know how you push it that's a good way to start find an early kill kija yeah, I don't know gets one g-men off to a 5v4 mm -hmm. and how do you cross the street on, without smokes so you just have to go for it right here hold on i got it go for it make sure you have some friends to kill anyone trying to kill you and you know, cross your fingers. But G-Men seem to be doing it relatively successfully. Theta's not in a great position to stop their push. I think Wookie's the only one they really have to worry about. I'm watching across. I mean, he is. A... I, I tell you, I tell you how you do this, Snooper. It's under suppressive fire. Miracle Dev has the right <laughs> idea. You know, Keisha has to be rotating around the back of Miracle Dev while Miracle Dev does all this, or else all the suppression isn't really worth it. You know, Keija should be swinging here as he crosses this street because Miracle Dev is keeping all of these visions. Everyone's tucked in right now. No one can swing oh. this. Wookie throws a nade at Ninto. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nintendo. Check. And there it is. Connects. Lane one, lane one, lane one, middle. And lane one is now completely cleared by Wookie. It is, but there's opportunity for the rest of G Men now. Shots come in somehow. Wookie finds 404 through the shrubs. Keisha downs himself, and G-Men are cut off at the knees as they try and swing here. Zach Fontaine as the lone survivor. He can get some reses out, but all of those dead or down bodies are in very sketchy positions. Let's see if he can get Keisha up relatively. If he did. Yeah. Amarco went. Oh, Amarco got across, but there was a guy that killed him. James throwing out a nade to make sure no one's behind that fence. Perfectly placed, might I add. Uh, where are you? It seems that Mayhem's bringing it back to G-Man right in the teeth. Yeah, solid defensive setup here. Uh, again, you know, we saw it out the gate. It's a standard defensive setup, but it's one that works. It's standard for a reason, you know, and... Uh, G-Men having a tough time going up against it, a trade there. That's not exactly what G-Men want, because it does actually favor Mayhem as the potato bot can swing here, get this res, and now a 4v1. And Zach Fontaine only has a minute 30 left, so he doesn't have all the time in the world to negotiate this. 
He's got to know of Theta's location because he's heard plenty of gunfire there. Look, he finally confirming 404. Back flat tank could have taken shots through the shrubs, but again, it's just a, a gamble. As soon as he does, all sorts of highs get drawn onto him too. So he's got to pick his shots, to say the least. Another thing to note is Zach Fontaine doesn't have an LMG, so he doesn't have all that extra ammo, and he's burned through at least two mags. And that's his last, I think. Big pickup yeah. number one doesn't get big pickup number two, three, and four, though. Mayhem able to find the final kill and get themselves around on the board. It was looking grim for a second there as G-Men were sort of running away with it, but a solid answer back from Mayhem. Yeah, Mayhem... They're not a team that's going to let the mentals affect them. They get a loss. Okay, next round, let's do it. And they've played enough rounds. So is G-Men, of course. That That's how it has to happen. If you let a loss affect you, you, you might as well just stop playing. You've lost already. So, bravo for Mayhem. Just picking themselves back up and <laughs> taking it back. You got to love it, you know, especially on the desk. That's what we love to see. I love to see the good close back and forth. I love to see these rounds go. I love to see more rounds in a map, you know? It's why I like casting and why I do it so often. It's, it's, it is a good time to watch these matches. And man, this is really delivering right now. We're gonna go to the same objective G-Men on defense this time. And I wonder if we're gonna see aggressive setups because one thing we have been seeing on this uh, objective is the defense getting a lot more aggressive, pushing forward a little bit more here. One of these newer positions that I've seen uh, utilized, you can kind of tuck yourself in to these, in between these two crates and have a really nice, uh, or excuse me, sand, I don't know what the heck, what do you call them? Hescos. Is, is that? Well then what that, are that, the sandbag walls? That, I guess you'd call those. I thought those sandbag. were Hescos. Uh, these are Hescos. I know these are at least called Hescos in my editor, so okay. that's what I'm going okay, with. Okay, well yes, we'll go with the official. <laughs> That's definitely what the... Uh, I'm sure, again, chat's going to light me up for it. But you can tuck yourself into the Heskos here right out the gate if you're uh, if you're feeling frisky and want to maybe toss a flash into the courtyard to sort of guarantee a safe entry. But uh, I don't know. You know, does G-Men do something like that or do they stay tucked in? It I mean, a lot, of this, a lot of it comes down to the lack of smokes on the offense. And even on the defense, I suppose, um, just to block vision, stop people from moving places. And here we are moving on to round three, or four, four. There has not been a cap. And obviously both teams are still in great spirits. If you're not having fun, I mean, you might as well not compete, you know? Gotta have a good time. That's really the core reason to play in the league is to enjoy yourself and play some good quality onward. Clearly, both of these teams enjoying themselves here as it has been some good quality onward. And uh, curious to see if G-Men can hold on to the defense or if Mayhem can bounce back, get themselves around on their own. And we talk about aggressive defensive setups. Keija here getting himself pretty far forward. Yeah, Keija's been loving these aggressive pushes. Is he gonna put? Is he gonna? Okay. I was wondering if he was going to push James there, but a flash, I think, should have deafened James so he doesn't hear Keijo rotate around to this Hesco crate either. And certainly a very aggressive position set up here for him. I think Keijo likes the strategy of sort of being the rock in the river where mm -hmm. he's going to rush up as fast as he can and sort of block that stream of offense. He doesn't care if he lives or dies. He just wants them to stop and think. And it seems to be working because Mayhem hasn't moved past Middle House yet. And it's been a full minute. Danger close. Bit of a hush here on the battlefield as Mayhem are taking this one a bit slower. We're, we've just been eyes on Kiza. He's the most forward. Uh, defender and Mayhem have yet to really challenge Kiza and his setup. They've been taking their time and they might actually kind of work their way around him if this if they don't take the playground entry. Theta could swing wide that side. James really going to be the only one that's going to contest uh, Kiza's defense's position here. Mayhem's going to have to start pushing quick, otherwise they're going to have to make an 
I guess a, a minute long push until the timer runs out because they've been sitting for the last two. Potato Bot here holding a tight angle, waiting to see if Nintendo's going to peek the corner. He doesn't end up doing it and stays quiet, so Potato doesn't hear the retreat either. Keisha and James on the meanwhile over on the opposite side of the map getting very close. Keisha could be finding his first target any moment. Down <laughs> goes James. James just backed up into Keisha and he's just like, nah, I don't want any of that. And Nintendo picking up Deflate, staying over here to see if Beta finds one, but shots ringing out from Wookie over on the west. Potato Bot pushes in through lane two. We're gonna split our attention across the playing field. That's a two kill piece there. Keisha picking up Theta on the other side. And I can't even follow all of these kills following. They're going out across the battlefield right now. Mayhem down to two. I've been watching Wookie and Potato Bot over by the objective, and they're successfully working it. They've cleared most of the objective. Uh, there is one more uh, G Man in the back, a Miracle Dev. I think he was using a drone. Another Whoa. one dead lane too. Whoa, Keisha. Yeah. Talk about aggression. He's in playground finding kills right now. Wookie, not in an ideal spot as he is getting pinched a bit. 404. Ready for the cross. Miracle Dev drawing Wookie's attention. And Keisha coming in from the flank. He finds Ooh. the shots from the backside. And I think Miracle Dev would have found those shots through the wood as well. But either way, down he goes. G Men up 3 1 on their map pick. Yeah, Wookie was trying to pull back, maybe get a new position to try and make another offensive push, but A, he was running out of time, and B, he was already being encircled. So, I think the writing was on the wall for Wookie. We are on to a new objective, but I think before we talk about that, it would be a good time to talk about our sponsors, right, Nightfire? You know, I don't, uh, yeah, sure. Pro 2 VR, VR cover, rebuff reality. You've seen them crossing across the screen quite often. You know, we uh, do a good job of making sure they're branded well on the stream. And uh, obviously, if you're in the league, you're aware that they provide prizes to the, to the top teams. And so it's something to compete for as well. We do appreciate, obviously, that coming in from our sponsors. But yeah, we do. A, they, uh, you see them. You know them. They're on your screen quite often. Yeah, and if you don't have a pro tube and you're wondering how all these players are able to hit everyone within a few shots, that's your answer. Go buy yourself a pro tube and <laughs> start being as accurate as these guys. Here we are on to round five with a new objective into center house. Uh, not too much to this objective. The only real concern for the offense is they do have to get up one set of stairs in that middle house and it's a rather rough deal especially if they haven't cleared that center house or they managed to miss one of the defenders and it can always cause chaos bit of pre-fire <laughs> potato bot gonna find 404 through the shrubs a bit of guesswork paying off for him there and an early advantage just by taking some shots through the shrubs. James Balk looking for a bit of action as well through the window down towards Line Nintendo. One. Got some early bit of uh, exchanging of fire here, but only just one down. Keisha getting picked up Line by Theta downstairs. as I say that. Theta having a nice position through the window. Nintendo able to get a great shot from the corner up into James there, and the trades the are quick and furious in this house. round as G-Men now into a 3v4. Nintendo made the smart play there, pulled away from the grenade. Yeah, it was lane one. I think he threw it from lane one. Ooh. One dead sickness spot. I missed that kill. Where was that? Zach Fontaine oh, over on the east of side of the map. A uh, new sort of uh, preferred rotation of a lot of teams on both sides uh, is to sort of direct yourself over to the east now. There's just a bit more cover on this side of the map, but you can go a bit wider than you normally could, and so I think it throws teams off a bit. Nintendo able to find definitely ducks in under the cover of Hesco boxes there as well as Theta takes some shots, and he's turned this into a 3v2. It's just the two defenders in the roof. They're inside the two-story. Yeah, G-Men have successfully been able to pull Mayhem out of their positions and pick them off. 
Theta and Wookie are in a bit of trouble. Can I they mean, hold the stairs? The, they can, but there's gonna if there's any sort of utility left for g man it can come through those windows, it can come up the stairs. They're very vulnerable to a nade explosion here. At least Theta is. And so I'm curious to see what g mens plan of approach is, since they've managed to really force them uh, to tuck themselves into the second floor. Oh, the pre-fire from Miracle Dev ends up grabbing Theta's dome, and down he goes. Wookie, the final defender with a flashlight on the stairs. Yeah, and they're just putting so much pressure on Wookie and anyone in the house, really. I mean, Theta certainly felt it with the bullet to the head. Uh, it's, it's rough. They're just going to keep spraying those windows and keeping eyes on those windows. So Wookie's stuck in that corner. He can't pull out. And the, uh, the unfortunate thing about that second floor is... Oh! What? Nintendo tried to throw the nade up through the gap in the stairs. He botched the nade, and Wookie thought he didn't botch the nade. All he heard was the pin pull, so he thought that there was a nade in the hand of an enemy. So he goes <laughs> to push the enemy with a nade in their hand, and instead, the botch nade bounces off the ceiling of the first floor and lands right at the feet of Wookie, getting the final kill. G-Men secure themselves a map. Onward! <laughs> Definitely a fortunate nade for the likes of G-Men, and uh, one that they can take to the bank because it gets them a map. And we go to a final third. Obviously, the map pool uh, not very robust these days. Tankers off of the playing field as well as is uh, S uh, Snow Peak. Uh, uh, cargo and subway banned, and so what's left? Bizarre. Yeah, I, I think it's 100% bizarre. Whether they're... I, I mean, I'm still a little flabbergasted because I was confused as to what happened there at the end, but that's the confusion that Onward can bring on. I mean, you could think you have 100% like map knowledge and know where the enemy is, even with communicating with your team. And, but once you get into that close range firefight, your instincts start kicking in. Wookie heard the pin. He knew that was a weak spot to go in, but didn't know the flub, as you said, happened. And I took him with it. <laughs> Like that's that's onward for you though. Like that's that's what real battles are. You could be doing the most heroic thing in the world, and all of a sudden, something random kills you. <laughs> I don't know what real battles are like, but I do know what virtual ones are like, and they are certainly hectic and full of pressure. And now we go to a final map number three. And uh, if you want to talk about pressure, this is really when things start to get down to the nitty gritty of it you know i don't think we're gonna see any crazy aggressive defensive setups i think we're gonna see pretty standard uh tucked in defense around obj and you know i'm curious if there is gonna be any uh, variation in that uh for this final map because you know this is it this is what it comes down to this whole series uh hinging on bazaar yeah, and Bazaar is one of the maps that actually hasn't gotten too many changes. So a lot of the old strategies are still very viable. Um, a lot of the old cap spots still exist. So unlike Quarantine or even parts of Suburbia where you had to change your strategies to how the map changed in 1.8, this one, I think Mayhem and G-Men are now going to be working off their old strats. They're going to be in their groove. They're comfortable with the map. They know all the places they can go and can't go. So... We're going to see probably the most meta plays we'll ever see because they need to be playing on point. They can't be practicing or trying stuff out as we like to do. So, well, you know, I don't know who's going to win. <laughs> yeah, we say that, but I, you know, sometimes that variation in the standard uh, setup is what gets you a little, uh, an extra kill or that early pick. And so, who knows? You know, uh, it really comes down to the confidence of the teams and how much they, uh, how good they feel on this map. And where am I going? We don't have to wait around and speculate any longer. We're here for round number one, Mayhem on defense. This is Mayhem's map pick. Or no? Maybe Mayhem picks side. Oh, they must have picked side because the map already chosen for them. Yeah. An interesting advantage to home. Some teams do like to do it. Um, it's not the usual choice, but 
It happens. But to be perfectly honest, this does look like a pretty standard defense. Someone watching the north, two in the center buildings, definitely in Potato Bot, one watching the mini courtyard, which is James Bulk, and I guess one just in the back, Theta, for uh, rotations. It's a good thing they stayed with the standard defense, too, because G-Men very much playing it safe and waiting for any sort of early aggression. Lots of angles here set up uh, for these early crosses, and... It is information G-Men can work with. They now know no one is getting aggressive because they've been holding these angles, and so they can sort of close down in their mind the scope of the defense. We'll see if that ends up leading to any sort of uh, success in their attack on objective, but it's probably going to be a, a minute or two before they get set up into a position to do so. And that's what you got to be uh, careful about on this map, especially on defense, is just pushing out a little too far because the offense can certainly be in places you're not expecting and they'll pick you off. And you really need everyone on a map like Bizarre. It's a close quarters street battle. And you're if you're a man down, that's, yeah, that's, a, that's a lane you're not covering. That's an angle you're not seeing as a team. So just make sure you guys are staying tight. If you are going to go for a flank, well, make sure you... <laughs> Make sure you do it with confidence, I guess. Four oh four working is doing his, yeah, four oh four working his way up here to the stairs. A miracle it's death a swinging on the south and It's a slow offensive push from G Men, which is interesting. You'd think they'd send someone out on recon. Not on that best of three. I, I do understand that. Lower. Oh, we forgot about downfall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, James gets naded by a miracle dev. Here comes the callouts. Let's see Mayhem rotate. Should be Theta coming for him. Yep. Now, this is the value of leaving one person sort of in the back of defense. They're not necessarily stopping anyone or there to shoot at anyone. They're there for this exact reason, to come res, support fire. The res isn't going to go out because Zach Fontaine gets a perfect nade right on top of James Bulk's body, taking him down and out of the, out of the round. Solid job from Zach. He's doing exactly what he's supposed to do over there on that southwest entry point. As the time ticks down, it's going to come up to these G-Men 3 here in the center, Nintendo 404 and Kija. They position themselves sort of crash in from Mini Bazaar. They also have Miracle Dev on the edge there, but they don't have a lot of time. A minute 12 now on the clock, and Deflade's getting some information from the audio cues. I think that is 404 going to sneak up behind Deathblade without appearing. Ooh. Wow, oh. Yes, it is. Nintendo and 404 find their kills and open up this defense like a can opener. Open up a can of worms. Theta goes down as well. Wookie getting picked off in G-Men with a very nice. nicely timed entry. Yeah, a solid entry there. They It was almost... I mean, they probably synchronized it. They probably did their little radio taps, whatnot. But that was perfect. As soon as one went in, the other did it too. And that's exactly what you need to do. Um, just confuse the people you're going after. Make, make them try and look the other way. Nope. Boom. Done. Really good bit of work oh. out of that G-Men team on the offense there. And Mayhem, you know, doing their best. But, again, the risk of being tucked in like that is you can lose your defense in a flash, you know, because it's a matter of getting killed on a corner peak or getting the kill on a corner peak. And, I, I mean, to your point, really nicely timed where they both came in at the same time. Nintendo's enemy was getting his attention drawn over to, to where those shots were coming from t through the wall and ultimately just an easy kill for Nintendo as well. And so a very good one, too, that opens up all sorts of opportunities for G-Man to then shoot across towards objective. And 
forcing rotations out of Mayhem, catching him out on those rotations, and just a very, very solid group push there. And now Mayhem is going to have to do something similar if they want to answer back. Yeah, I mean, let's. I'm curious to see if Mayhem can pull off some of the same, I guess, coordination, because that was beautiful. They completely yeah. took that side of the street in almost one move. <laughs> yeah. I, it'd be hard to beat that. Here you go, starting up round two. Or false start. Yeah, false start is there is. We're missing one for G men. Uh, so hopefully we get that G men reconnected in lobby and we'll be back into map number three. But, uh, I mean, we, we predicted G men to be the victors here. A tough prediction to, to say nonetheless, but I mean, Mayhem have really been doing quite a good job today. They have been finding good picks. They've been getting some good, uh, solid kills and really coming together as a squad. Good, solid teamwork securing them a nice Suburbia. Uh, excuse me, a quarantine round out the gate. They had a tough time on Suburbia uh, on those closer quarters. And so I, but I do think here on Bazaar, they've got a bit better chance. Obviously, if you pick side and then lose right out the gate, kind of negates the side you've just chosen. But uh, we'll see. You know, I, I think they're a team that can answer back. Oh, yeah. They're, I mean, they're definitely a team that can answer back. Uh, Bizarre is always one of those weird maps where if a team starts getting momentum, it can often carry on through the rest of the map or the round. So G-Men, they started with James Bulk. They picked him down. Then they took Theta. And uh, I mean, once that started happening, I think the Mayhem defense started not crumbling per se, but got a little distracted. And that distraction was just enough for G-Men to do what they did to um, the two players across the street wiping them out, ending the round essentially there. Even though there was one more left, he was going to get gunned down regardless. Looks like we're still waiting for our yeah. fourth on team, man. I think we might cut to a brief intermission while we wait for this fifth to rejoin for a G-Man. Thank you so much for tuning in. To the onward VRML. Don't go anywhere. Map number three, the series decider. We'll be right back in a few minutes.
Thank you so much for waiting, everybody. I do appreciate you as we get our fifth back into lobby. We are all squared away on the G-Men side of things, and we are hopping into round number two of map number three, our series decider, and G-Men off to a good start grabbing their Marsock round. What is Mayhem going to do is the real question, Snooper. Well... <laughs> That's always a fun question. How do you bounce back from something like that? It kind of puts some questions in your mind. But it looks like what Mayhem's doing is just a solid Kayot push with Theta and Deflate going through there. Wookie's watching the north to see if anyone flanks or pokes out. And then James and I guess he has got a teammate coming with him sort of flanking through those middle buildings. It's a pretty spread out offense. So if... G-Men starts picking them down one by one. That could be a big problem for Mayhem because you essentially are doing a bunch of one-on-five fights. And you never want to do that. <laughs> one thing I have uh, was not really aware of, I don't know if you are, obviously, probably should be, but Kayot now one full building upstairs. You can go throughout yes. the entirety of the second floor. And I talk about Bazaar not being changed much, kind of like Subway, but that is a massive change albeit a small one, it's pretty significant to that Kayot building. And uh, I think it's actually only one of the only changes. Uh, I suppose some windows have been boarded up as well, but... It's the only major change. Yeah. Uh, one that I'd say majorly affects gameplay, especially when the objective's over in Kayot. Because before, you could cap in the second story, and if you weren't in the right second story, you couldn't kill the guy that was capping. Also, you couldn't transfer across the other side of the building to kill the people, you know, uh, in the center of Kayat. So it was kind of a mixed bag. Mm. Now it's much better. It's a lot easier to defend. Saw some early aggression from Nintendo out the gate, and he is now trying to peek through these crates to support ID anyone coming in there. Theta had his laser dialed in right on top of Nintendo, but clearly didn't see any sort of shift in pattern to warrant shooting any shots, so Nintendo is going to live to see another day. Miracle Dad is putting rounds downrange towards the north side of things, shooting. but no one's coming, and he even calls out he's just putting rounds downrange. Well, sometimes it is valuable to just draw the enemy's attention to you, even if you're not on the objective, not defending, just make them think or look a different way, as opposed to we're going to the objective. If they're focusing on that and they're doing their plan, well, you're going to have a bad time. But if you manage to distract and put a little bit of chaos into that plan, well, yeah, you have an advantage at that point. Curious to see how this mayhem push works out because they've sort of managed to work around the G-Men defense for the time being. You do have shots from Wookiee over on that north side. You have Keisha eyes on James over on the southeast. And obviously things about to unfold in center here as Deflate is danger close to 404. Potato Bot actually finds Zach Fontaine. That's an interesting pickup there. What angle yeah, it was a get solid. From? It was a solid two-shot burst from the pallets over by Center Street. Right in through the little I guess I, I don't want to call it a doorway, but the wall. Nintendo gets a huge kill. James finds Keija. Potato Bot putting suppressive fire downrange, and we're definitely split across the field here. Nintendo getting a bit over aggressive. Actually, just the right amount of aggressive. Finds Wookiee on the backside. Defilades pad out. Looking for Nintendo. Does get the refrag. Defilades saw him there, and 404 is going to swing. Not before he gets shot in his side by Potato. So some big kills from Mayhem. Miracle Dev suddenly the last one alive. Yeah, he has to crash onto this objective, and there's multiple places to cap on it. Three different places, outside by the objective, inside the room, and inside the little hallway. So, a Miracle Dev has a big job ahead of him, and he doesn't. And a trade goes out between a Miracle Dev and Potato Bot, and Mayhem take a round. We're all tied up. Very similar to the likes of G-Men on offense there. Punching in, pinching in at the last second, and finding the picks they needed you know nintendo coming in huge to get a couple of kills inside the bizarre area but ultimately can't get enough 404 about to find the refrag as soon as he drops off of his angle he gets shot in the side really good timing well coordinated from the mayhem team to pinch in all at the same time and have those angles open up like that so very good on them on their push just a different side you know they decided to come in from the southeast instead of from the center and uh, it pays off yeah, it was a solid push for Mayhem. 
taking advantage of every single, <laughs> I guess, person looking the wrong way, poking out a little too far. I, Miracle Dev certainly had a big job if he was going to try and guard that objective, but I think he did the right thing there at the end. He decided, I'm not going to defend this objective. I'm just going to die, and we're going to move to the next round. That's that's sometimes the smart play, especially if you're preventing a cap, and that objective is very capable. We're obviously going to get a lot of planning, but here we go, starting up on round two. Gotta love it. Round three, Snooper. Hard math, I know. Ah, I know. My, my brain is not working tonight. <laughs> You've been doing a lot of good work on the custom map front, and I'm sure... Uh, the quest players do enjoy those new maps that you've been introducing uh, through the workshop, so <laughs> you can be uh, forgiven for now. But uh, you got to <laughs> keep you. making maps, or else. Or else, <laughs> otherwise my uh, addition of one plus one getting wrong, you know. Yeah, you don't get you don't get the the pass anymore. Yeah. Callouts from Mayhem identifying this early aggressive rotation along the north. Four oh four doesn't really care that he could have been spotted, and he's taking full control of center courtyard. And this is kind of an interesting defensive setup for Mayhem. Not an aggressive one. We've seen uh, sort of trends of teams pushing pretty heavily over to that east side and popping out onto that east street, sort of covering the whole, uh, the whole center of the map. That's what 404 is looking for. I know I like to do that when I play this objective. Uh, sending someone to the east is actually pretty valuable. You can find anyone crossing across the tank. And you have a pretty good advantage to anyone trying to attack you head on. So the fact that Mayhem didn't send someone that way says that they're really holding tight to this objective and they're probably not going to send out flankers. I mean, yeah, you look at the overhead, you look at positions they're taking, they're a bit more concerned about the immediate uh, quick spawn, but they know it's not that. They've had the callouts. They know the attention is east, so it is odd to not see any sort of shift in attention over here. Really, Potato Bot's going to be their front line for uh, a good portion of that southeast defense, and I don't know. We'll see what G-Men do. No smokes available for crosses. It's all down to flashbangs and grenades, and so your options are definitely limited. Yeah, no, no mayhem players poking out right now. They're not revealing their positions. They're not even like taking hot shots at where the bar potential finished. positions. They're and just they letting them come to them, and that's that's a good plan. I think Potato Bot will get at least one good ambush on Zach Fontaine. Whether Keisha will get the refrag, I don't know, but that's why you travel in packs. Oh, well, he's definitely not going to get it now since he broke off. A lot of time being burned right now. Yeah, I mean, five minute clock, definitely uh, a bit faster, uh, you know, a minute shorter than 1 7. Teams, I think, have adjusted to it at this point, but uh, you still do see rounds coming down to that last minute. And some teams, I think just the other day, were, were uh, winning rounds by just, you know, pushing things to the time limit. The offense wasn't getting there in time. And so. Still some squads adjusting to it, but I would imagine G-Men and Mayhem both pretty familiar with the, their timings. And we've seen it already. Both of them are familiar with their timings. Their coordination is very on point today. It looks like G-Men are going to want to make this attack sometime soon. Otherwise, they're going to be pressed for time. And I know... Well... I don't know. They're, they're moving very slow. That's my only concern right now. For a minute and 45 seconds left, that's going to be a rough push. They are, but Zach picking up the pace on the southeast. He's going to be challenging Potato Bot soon enough. You also have 404 pushing in from the center. 404 is doing an interesting play. He's watching the right direction, so if Wookie pokes out to try and get the kill, 404... Should be able to get a shot off. Oh, Defilade with an interesting angle. One down on point. Wow, he was watching for that entry from the front there. One down in the middle of the street. On yeah, that's the experience of Mayhem right now. They know that that lane can shut off, shut down anyone crossing that street to the objective from Minus Kayad. one down east. 
Fatalbot getting the kill southeast. So that's two gone for G Men. Their defense, uh, their offensive push. Tendo gets the refrag. Yeah, looking a little stronger after that refrag. A lot of headshots. That's what you get. At the, I mean, that's what you need too. You know, especially now with the way the meta thing, the way the meta is. You really want to lock in those kills out the gate. It really comes down to who's the better shot. Keisha getting a couple of rounds to the shoulder. A very quick heal. Swings. Oh, my goodness. A fourth time for G-Men. Downs himself on a rotation. Nintendo gets picked up. And Mayhem lock in a two-round lead. I mean, that was a solid, solid defense for Mayhem there. Um, they put... <laughs> They put Zach Fontaine down as soon as they saw him, but um, it wasn't it wasn't uh, enough, really. I, I don't know. They they didn't get to the objective. They didn't push fast enough. I'm still a little confused as to why you would wait to the last 30 to 45 seconds. I think speed in this meta right now is kind of the game, name of the game, especially since smokes are out and flashes are so strong. It's, it's get there and go. And you know, it's uh, it's the reality. It's how things are. You know, we saw a disconnect on a cap. You know, uh, punching in a code DCs to lose a round. It, it, things don't always work out the way you hope they do. The really unfortunate uh, reality is that there's some bugs in the game right now, and you know, downing yourself with your own rifle is one that can happen when you're sprinting. I don't know what the practice, what the Deets of it are, and we don't need to dive into them, but nope. that's what you're seeing, you know? These players are downing themselves. It's not an intentional thing that's happening. They're not getting shot by some sort of mystery. Uh, well, I guess it is a bit of a mystery, but they're not getting shot by anyone, uh, any sort of enemy. It is a bit of a bug. And so that's what we saw there to sort of cap off that round, and it has uh, unfortunately been happening to G-Men maybe a bit too often. Uh, but uh, we'll see if they can adjust, because that's what it's all about, is adjusting to your surroundings. and. They go on the defense for round number four. What? Well, they certainly got a good plan. It seems like they're going to send two to three west, one onto the objective, and Tendo's going over towards the east. That's really what you want to do with this objective. Watch both sides, west, east, and then keep some eyes on Kayat, and that's pretty much your goal. Um, once they start getting close, they got Zach Fontaine. To rotate into them. <laughs> There's one on the red track. Ah, in the west. Keep thinking Keisha's getting shot at. Bit of an aggressive move here from G Man Keisha swinging there on a red truck, peeking just over the bed to find the kill through the window. There's more here though, just narrowly avoids getting shot there. Looks for the re peek, can't get those shots on to James, and it's a bit of a 1v1 duel between Keisha and James. On the southwest. Oh, definitely wants to get involved in the bit. Keisha is going to sing to himself to calm his nerves, but is it going to be enough? He's in a 1v2 now. They keep pecking at each other. Someone's bound to hit someone. Uh, James Bulk's going to poke out with a little bit of a crawl, see if he can get hey, Keisha gonna, unawares, gonna, but Keisha does the smart thing and backs off. I mean, once you get into a firefight, yeah, you respond, maybe get a few extra peeks out, but really the answer is fall back, let them come to you. You'll be in a stronger position. You'll be ready for the fight. He won't be. <laughs> He's just thinking to himself. It's spreading across the G-Men defense. I've heard it, hear it now coming in from Miracle Dev as well. It does provide some information. You stop hearing the singing, you know he's dead. Or that's all part of their plan, and that's what they want you to do. <laughs> Keisha got, he took a shoulder shot there. Yeah, James trying to get a piece. Ooh, that grenade was perfect. I only saw the trail, but it was right on top of Defilade. Nintendo picking up one dead east. I got another one with over me. on the east side. Calls out. There's another here as well, so he's aware of Potato's position. And again, we're going to have to split our attention between these last two as they are across the opposite ends of the map. Yes, James Bull trying to push up on Keija. Looks like they're going to have a mini mart fight. Oh, 
Oh, and James Wolf catches Keisha under the front bumper of the red truck. He just won his first fight of many to come back here from the 4-2 to two deficit. We'll see if Potato Bot can contribute and find some kills of his own as he's over here on the east side working his way up towards objective. And he should be able to find 404 if 404 leans out from his defensive position. I mean, Mayhem are actually in a pretty strong position because they're going to be encountering at least one or two of G-Men players alone. So that's going to be 1v1s, and that's really what you want to do in a 4v2 situation is encounter them one at a time, as few of them as you can. And <laughs> honestly, I don't think anyone can help Nintendo if he goes down. So this is this is kind of dicey for G-Men right now. Yeah, see, there you go. Uh, no one can go back for that that res without getting taken down with Potato Bot. He's one of and he gets that confirm, so no need. You know, ultimately, no. uh, the kill comes in, but will it matter? Because no rotations are going to swing over there to get that res. Although, Miracle Dev is looking to challenge Potato Bot over here. He might be too late. This could be a bad rotation. Yeah, he could be lost hunting over here while Potato Bot goes in, gets kills, maybe gets cap. Nope. There's only one on objective. It's 404, and he's getting squeezed between the two offense. James and Potato crashing in. Well, Miracle Dev come in as Potato Bot tries to cross. That's really the danger for Potato Bot here. is back against the wall here. Here's those shots from Potato. Swings out, gets one. James tries his luck and ends <laughs> up in a trade. Miracle Dev, the lone survivor, but that's all they needed. The G-Men now tie things up 2-2. Well, it turns out Miracle Dev coming off objective was actually a good thing. I mean, <laughs> he didn't get gunned down and yep. he didn't... He was, yeah, he won it for him, essentially. Now we're off to a new objective, and this is actually one of the more interesting objectives for Bazaar, Kayat. And as we previously stated, they changed these buildings so you can go across the second floor all the way from left to right, east to west. You don't have to go down the stairs anymore. You can send one dude up there and you've guarded the whole second floor. Round number five underway here as the series decider map three continues to deliver. It has been an excellent back and forth the entirety of this series and it really is an exciting finale here. And I got to wonder if G-Men are thinking cap because Kayot, like you said, tough to defend. And it looks like they're sending Wookie out for perhaps a flank. He's going really oh, far into the uh, west side. But I think that got called out. I think he just saw that. Although, he must have. I don't know. Nintendo was holding that angle. It doesn't cross spot out anything. It's dangerous. It's aggressive, but it's dangerous. If he doesn't act off of that long rotative ro uh, spot and holds that angle for too long, he's essentially putting his team into a 4v5 on Kai out of all places. I mean, sending someone that far from objective, as we previously previously stated, is a big risk, but we haven't seen caps. It's always come down to deaths. I mean, the, the, that's the experience of these teams. They understand when they need to get back to the objective, when they can leave it. So I, I'd say they can do this and not fear too much about a cap, but their experience is what's keeping them together right now. Um <laughs> if they didn't know when to get back in time, there would at least be one or two caps on each team. Nintendo goes down. Wookie rotating off of his early position back towards objective. So the risk of him being over aggressive there is now sort of been washed away as he rotates back towards Kayot. The rotation could lead to his death as Keisha is here. Eyes on, does see the cross, but can't get those shots off. So Wookie lives another day. Keisha's always into these 
I want to say aggressive stealth plays where he's like crawling through the middle of a <laughs> a kill zone. Uh, one, one, hey, they worked uh, for him there. He took one. And as soon as he did, you notice he immediately hops up and drops back to cover. He doesn't linger, doesn't stay out there. If he did, Theta would have had an angle right now. Yeah, and that that's what you need to do. He knew his position was already revealed by the gunfire. There's no point in staying down. One did go Get out of there. Or, um, Kaya. West. A few call-outs coming out from Keija. A little bit of planning going on. 404 is actually in a very interesting position all the way in the east, isn't he? He is indeed. He's managed to make himself a nice little rotation here undetected under the nose of Defilade. And it could be a pretty dang big sneak here. If he goes full stealth mode up onto this north side, he could completely slide underneath this defense and be on objective. You do have uh, the defense a little is, is diligent. You know, Potato is checking his flanks. Wookie obviously also has an angle there from the second story. But uh, the alarm bells are not going to go off here because definitely probably hasn't heard them. No, not at all. Yeah, that's not a, uh, yeah. Are you four oh four is still uh, undiscovered. I don't think Defile is discovered either, though. He's in an aggressive position here. Miracle Dev could go down if he's not careful. Keisha's safe for now, but he could be in trouble soon enough. Defile does get one. He swings out looking for Keisha. Keisha's not there. One down a red truck, one shot. Keisha, master of stealth out in the open. Big shots, misses. Defile drops back, takes shots of his own, misses himself. Ooh. A trade in the center of all places, and Keisha, oh, Theta putting rounds down range, just missing his head. He's just fighting in the middle of a B-storm right now. And he's doing well. He is doing well. Found a couple of key picks. He's forcing rotations as well as Theta has had to shift back here into objective, and he finds that rotation, an instant confirm from Zach Fontaine. Now... Oh, wow, 404 just dodges Potato Bot shot. Potato Bot comes here, down he goes. Wookie with a nice nade on Nikesia. Gets one, but now he's all alone. Spots Zach, tries to get the shots off. Can't quite get him. Zach gets the kill. A Marsoc round into the hands of G-Men on our final map. I mean, Keisha's super ninja there. Like, just waltzing through. <laughs> or crawling through the middle of the kayak, taking, down, taking bodies as he goes. I mean, no fear at all. Looks like we did lose one from G-Men, so maybe it's a, uh, a swap? Hmm. Yeah, I, pro I, I would be surprised by that. Maybe just a reset, if you will. Hopefully a quick one at that, too. Hopefully we don't have to go to an intermission, but I mean... We've got a, a decent bit to talk about. Again, this Kyot objective, Mayhem are not out, you know. G-Men have a little bit of a lead, but Kyot's not easy to defend. G-Men proving that by getting that Marsoc W. And, uh, you know, if the chips land just right and, you know, things go into your favor, a cap is possible. It's obviously tougher without smokes. Can't really cut off vision. Can't really open up the opportunity to punch in a code for a longer period of time than you might normally have. But... Still, the ability to sneak in, it's all uh, its all still there on Kayad, and I, I kind of wonder, do you think actually that this is a bit of a less challenging objective to defend now that you have the full upstairs available to you on defense? Well, it's definitely more defendable, um, but it still has the same weaknesses it had before, where yeah. your, your offense, it's always going to be a bit more concentrated than the defense because the defense has to cover the back of Kayat, the front of Kayat, the sides of Kayat. Um, no matter what, you're, it, a well-planned offensive push will always overwhelm the defense, I think, on this objective. And G-Men sort of proved it there, where even Keija was just crawling through the center, taking fire, but no matter what, he was able to find the bodies a lot faster, a lot more accurately than the defenders were and 
that's sort of the that's that's how this objective should be pushed on it looks like everyone's back in and we're starting up round six can't confirm that there's no substitution coming in or anything like that it's the same uh five for both sides so curious to see what we get here as it is essentially series point for a g-man all they got to do is hold on on the defense and mayhem back against the wall we'll see what they can do as we get into round six okay i mean mayhem can certainly lock it out here with our first cap of the match and that would be very cool to see if they could manage to get a cap on kayat that'd be a great way to end it but all it takes is huh? G-Men defending their objective, holding their castle to take the win right now, and that's not the place you want to be on Mayhem. Seeing a similar aggressive rotation from G-Men as uh, <clears throat> the likes from Mayhem, but this got identified. Potato Bot did see Miracle Dev cross here. I do wonder, though, if that's going to slow down the Mayhem offense a good bit because you do see Potato now holding Angles and James, both not necessarily charging in through the south... Uh, southwest side yeah miracle dev is definitely a little bit of an x factor now especially if they're aware of where he is and to be honest if i was a miracle dev i think i would make myself known just to slow them down just to make them think and make them fight me and then maybe even run away so that they spend time dealing with this position while i'm not even there um but that's me i, I like to be a bit of a little bit of a loud player where a miracle dev is definitely more of a silent ninja We'll have to tune back in to Potato and the like in just a moment. Deflate's holding center. Not really anything crazy going on. Key's just tucked in behind Fountain in the middle, so he's not going to go down to any sort of pre-fire. And over on the east, we have Theta and Wookie crossing street and working their way over to this east side. 404 has a line down over to that east rotation, and we'll, I'm curious to see if they'll end up crossing through it. Ooh, first shots come out. Not sure who that was directed at, but someone now revealed their position. Right, Keys is definitely in a bit of an X factor because once they try and push in, it's very hard to see the players that are hiding behind that fountain. We're just generally on the other side of it, so you can obviously you can get caught out as you try and push through or through the side. And James is certainly hell. If Keisha just looks, I think he has an angle. Trying to keep tabs of everything across the board. Wookie and Theta in blue room on east. Obviously, we got Miracle Dev holding his position over on the west. I mean, it looks like Mayhem is avoiding the full west push and just trying to hit Kayak because Potato Bot's moved off of it. James Bulk moved off of it. Nice. Wookie gets the revive on Theta, so their east push is now very active again. off to a good start 4v5 for g-men now and uh it's not what you want when you're on defense and if you're Keisha, it's not exactly what you're hoping for because when you lose a side your defensive position in the center becomes a lot less solid oh whoa james with the nade that was beautiful just right on top of Keisha. We and now Miracle Dev has to rotate back. We were talking about that position, that rotation being very risky because you're so far away from objective. Zach Fontaine goes down, and this sucker's open to a cap. Mayhem could yeah. easily punch in the code. Miracle Dev has to get back here. He's still pretty far away. Nintendo is here, is able to res. James is yep. booking it up to the objective. Miracle Dev's found one. James goes down as well. Things are swinging. Into the favor of G-Men, a 3v3 now as Theta and Wookie tuck themselves in behind cover. And the panic on objective working out into the favor of G-Men. Nintendo, no, Zach Fontaine finds Wookie. Theta putting suppressive fire towards a Miracle Dev. Down he goes, a quick refrag from Zach Fontaine on the side. And Defilade all alone finds one kill in the 1v1. This has been crazy, just back and forth. Miracle Dev is still down, so he can give out some call-outs to Zach Fontaine. 
I mean, Deflate's certainly in an interesting position, though. He's running out of time. 35 seconds on the clock, and he knows it. About to hear the buzzer, and things are about to get really fast. He's pushing through Center Bazaar. He's right by the fountain, pushing up to objective. He's pushing up to objective from the fountain. Center Bazaar, Center Bazaar, he's in the wood. Oh, oh Zach it. tried to stay tucked in, but definitely knew right where he was. The callouts from Miracle Dev were there, but not enough to win a swing trade with. And we are in to a round seven on map three. I mean, it, I, I, I thought that was going to be a cap for a second on Mayhem's point. Yep. The G-Men stabilized, and then it just kept going back and forth. Crazy, crazy final few rounds to this series. A great way to sort of round off what has been a fantastic Sunday night series. You can't ask for a really a better finale on the caster desk than this right now. Where do we go to? Where are we headed? F upper Northeast. Uh, for East our objective, objective. Yeah. and uh, I, you know who knows what happens here spawn points mean the world for this if you're going to go quick or slow and I imagine when things come down to it G-Men aren't going to be playing this too aggressively and probably down to that last two or one or two minutes yeah I can definitely see G-Men just playing it safe holding on to their you know castle or fortress area and just not sending out flankers not even risking it because you don't really have to on this objective they have to come to you You've got all these buildings. You've got all these little alleyways. Uh, the real risk is perhaps Mayhem sends out someone a little too far. But I, I honestly think both teams are going to play this pretty close to the chest. We don't have to wait and speculate any longer. Round number seven is underway. Mayhem on the defense. Yeah, you hear a lot of no pressures going around. <laughs> and, uh, we know it's exact. It is the exact opposite, truly. This is really when the entire, you know, you get the most pressure on yourself. You know, this is when things matter the most. It all comes down to this final round. And a slow spawn for G-Men out the gate, so we'll see how they spread themselves and push towards the objective. Yeah, he's just moving fast through Kayot. Not being spotted, though. He's being very smart with his movements, making sure he's tucked in, not getting picked out by any of the usual spots. Um, granted, Mayhem could, could have sent someone out into something weird, but they did not, so... They're just sitting tight, guarding all their little corners, and Deflate's the only one really off objective right now. So I, I think this this is going to be a pretty, pretty tight defense. They're not going to move off of it. Deflate's definitely close enough to come back to the objective if they start losing people on it. So, oof. Is this Keisha is going to be rough for Gearin. He's yep. just being Keisha, you know, Shadow Ninja. Now, is there any world where he's like no potatoes got this covered maybe if he gets his eyes drawn from an east push there's a chance for Keisha, but i don't see a world don't where this works it. oh my oh my that nade toss and it begins guys potato bots down from a Keisha nade beta rotates to try and cover the hole <laughs> He's just telling everyone to come in. Oh, oh, the blind fire through the window. That's two down. Things are bad for Mayhem. It's a 5v3. East is starting to swing in. Defilade rotates out, gets one, able to cross out. 404 has snuck himself in. Wookie gets picked up off the backside. James, the lone defender in a 1v3 as G-Men gather themselves for their final push. Yeah, that was a solid, solid takedown by Keisha. And it just kicked off the action. Miracle Dev out in the open. That's a good nade. That's going to confirm Miracle Dev as well. Swing in here from James. Here's the footsteps from Zach Fontaine. Can't get the gun up in time. Zach finds the kill, hucks his rifle in celebration. G Men take the final map 4 3. Yeah, that was a solid, solid round of onward, though.
Great back and forth. Great defense. Keija, by the way, great double kill. I couldn't ask for a better end. Quite the series to tune into for your Sunday night fight. That is for sure. And this right here is the VRML in action. Sure, there's some bugs, but ultimately it is some fun stuff to watch and a great bit of action there to round off a great series. Couldn't have asked for anything more, Snooper. No, not at all. I mean, <laughs> that was perfect plays, perfect back and forth, perfect refrags too. It all just came down to who could get the most kills and who could trade their life, you know, <laughs> for the most cost. So bravo for G-Men, bravo for Mayhem for giving us a wonderful game tonight. Absolutely. Big shout outs to both of the teams today for delivering some excellent onward action. That's going to be it for us here on the desk today. Like I said, if you're new here, make sure you hit that follow button because there's going to be a lot more action for the remainder of this Season 10 right here on this channel and Onward Master League 2 and 3. So be sure to hit that follow button. If you have Twitch Prime, feel free to drop your Prime sub here. It helps to go back to support us casters on the desk. We do appreciate it. And with that, a brief moment to, again, shout out the sponsors. You've seen them ticking across your across your screen. Pro 2 VR, Cyber Shoes, Fix Gaming, B Hactics, VR Cover, Rebuff Reality, all coming together to support the VRML, offer prizes for our champions, and really make it a bit more of a, uh, I don't know, a little, little bit something else to compete for in the league. Obviously, also that prize money coming in this season, so certainly a lot on the line for these top teams. And, uh, wow, a great series to end the weekend. Again, make sure to tune in next week for more VRML action, but that's going to be it for us. My name has been Nightfire with two E's, my co-caster, Snooperfax. We will see you all in a few days. Adios. Later, guys. Stay safe.